So we're here in the, in, in Brussels yeah. uh, with Car Amigo. Alex, you're the co-founder of, of Car Amigo. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what is it? Car Amigo is a peer-to-peer -peer car rental company uh, whereby you can uh, rent out your own car. Um, it's pretty much the Airbnb for cars. Um, so you can rent out your own car with peace of mind since we can uh, uh, we give an insurance which will assist sorry which will cover the, the entire rental. Uh, we give uh, uh, roadside assistance 24/7 across Europe. Uh, we verify every single profile of the renters and uh, recently we can even uh, give you a fiscal peace of mind since we negotiated a, a deal with the, the fiscal authorities. Okay, impressive. So, so building a Airbnb of, of car car rental sounds easy, but I get it's uh, quite complex. So, how, uh, first first step, how did you came to the idea? Well, it's very simple. I uh, I'm French, so I was uh, visiting some friends in Bordeaux, and for the first time in my life, I uh, rented out I rented an, a house on Airbnb, and it was so warm that day, at least in Bordeaux, that uh, we said to ourselves, uh, uh, let's rent a car. And the thing is, we're in downtown Bordeaux, and to get to the nearest uh, rental station, you would have to go back to the airport, So, which was a pain in the neck. So I said, uh, is this possible that something like Airbnb exists for cars? And I typed, and I stumbled upon one of uh, our uh, colleagues in France, uh, took a, a bit of, of time to find a car, but we did, and off we went. Uh, we went to Arcachon, which is like... A, uh, Schreveningen of, uh, of uh, Bordeaux, uh, back and forth with a very old car, but it did its job, which was to bring there, us there and, and back. And that evening when I came back to Brussels, I said to myself, this has to be what uh, we need to do. I mean, uh, we have another business, which is a bit older, uh, older economy. Uh, and we, I said to myself, this must be the new uh, uh, economy. We must be uh, doing something like this. So uh, that was like two years ago. Okay, and then? So then the problem started because... The challenge started. <laughs> uh, so the key, two of the key factors uh, of such a business is to get an insurance and to get the roadside assistance. Because the insurance is going to reassure the car owner that if anything happens during the rental, he shouldn't worry because the insurance is there to cover for any damages that can happen during the car rental. And you need also the roadside assistance, that is more to reassure the renter this time, that if anything happens during the rental with a car, a breakdown, puncture, whatever, then the roadside assistant is gonna come assist and repair, and if can re cannot repair, they, they will tow away the car and, uh, and provide you with a, a, a replacement car. So to find these partners in Belgium has taken us a long, long time. Of course, outside all the development, the IT development, all other stuff which needs to be incorporated, but those two being absolutely central, without which you cannot start Caramigo or any other peer-to-peer -peer car rental, uh, took us a year and a half uh, through lots of difficulties. Um, but in, eventually we, we did find the, the right partner, which is a, a subsidiary of uh, AXA. It's, it's a small company, but very, uh, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, down to earth. Uh, mm -hmm. Subsidiary of a big company, but small enough to be uh, uh, adaptable. And, uh, and that's it. We started uh, in June 2015, uh, the, the rentals. Uh, so far, the, it's, it's uh, picking up, I would say, between slowly and medium. Uh, but we haven't done any advertising. We just started mm -hmm. advertising recently. Uh, and uh, so so far so good. Yeah, and 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 uh, what were your main challenges with, with finding the right insurer, and what were the ingredients of of getting the right one, and also getting them involved, to also for them to take the risk uh, and to work with you as a really young startup. So uh, I start first with touring. Touring is the the roadside assistance uh, with the uh, AA of Belgium. Um, they were very proactive. Uh, when we first met, uh, the guy with, which, with whom we had a meeting told us, wait a second, uh, let me get my boss come down. And from maybe the first meeting onwards, we kind of had an agreement. It took some time to draft it, but from day one, they were inclined to uh, jump into the, the sharing economy bandwagon, thinking that 
maybe I exaggerate, but if it's not the us doing it, our competitor will. So they were very forward thinking. It's not the case of the insurance companies. I, I contacted, uh, we contacted something like, I would say that 20 out of the 2010 never answered. Uh, not even like no, no answer. A few of them granted us uh, uh, a meeting uh, and only in the end, two gave us an offer or three. Uh, the, th the first one we gave us an offer uh, took us through maybe 10 different versions of the contract and in the end, they pulled the plug. So uh, we were faced with starting all over again. And why did they pull the plug? Basically because uh, they had, there were two teams. One team which was really seeing this as a marketing thing, as if we do this, we're going to be seen by the press, by our customers, by uh, our competitors are as innovative, so let's do it. And you had the other team, uh, the actuaries and, and maybe the legal people who are like, oh my God, this, it's new, it can only be bad. So in the end, you don't, you don't, you need to make an agreement with the company. And if the company is tearing, it, tearing itself apart to make a deal with you, it's not good. So the boss said, sorry, caro amigo, but it's not going to work out. Uh, so yeah, we're back, uh, back to the drawing board. Uh, and that time we said, okay, we should go and see smaller insurances. Uh, and that's exactly what happened with uh, this insurance, uh, AEP. Um, the, the, we, we directly met the two uh, CEOs. So no, uh, you know, otherwise you go and see this guy is going to report mm. that guy. And in the end, uh, a century later, you get an answer. So that we don't do anymore. And, and at the same time, you're, you were already busy with developing. So you yeah. uh, really had to trust for yourself and with your co-founders. Okay, yeah. we're going to find an insurer. It's only only a matter of time and yeah, uh, lots of be, patience. To be honest, there was this one time I, th I said to myself, we're not going to make it. Well, those guys pulled the plug. I said, uh, Okay, do we still believe in it uh, or, or do we stop right here, right now? We have another business, so uh, we could say you know, we concentrate on the other business. Uh, but indeed, we did in parallel uh, all the development, uh, the IT development, the marketing development, and also the insurance and all the contract. Uh, and and uh, fortunately, it worked out. But uh, without the insurance, again, it's just impossible to start the system. I think we have some seen here and there uh, companies trying that but it's just not doable yeah. because the owner will never trust I mean actually if he loses this car there's nothing that repays it yeah. that's the whole point yeah, of the insurance that's a big risk yeah yeah and but sometimes I also think about trust in the sharing economy people are, are uh, of course I, I, I really believe in the need of the insurance of, uh, with peer-to-peer with -peer car sharing but also we are m m many times also maybe too much focusing on trust because Many trust issues also with a reputation system, rating systems. They are really based on on on, on facts. Uh, well, that's why uh, you need the insurance. And, yeah. Because, because <clears throat> the it's true. I think it's uh, the sharing economy is pretty much the trust economy. You need to trust the other party that is going, not going to screw up your car, and the renter needs to trust that the car is in good shape. So indeed, the rating system is very important, but you need also third parties, which makes the system secure. And that's the payment system, that's the uh, insurance, and that's the roadside assistance. And in our case, also the fiscal part. So someone renting out his car on Caramigo really does it in peace of mind, because what can go wrong? And if something goes wrong, that's where what's, that's why we got these guys. Yeah, and, 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 and t t tell me something more about the fiscal, because I think we have a really unique deal here in, in Belgium uh, with the fiscal part of the peer-to-peer -peer car sharing. Yeah, so from day one, uh, we, uh, we thought, or at least my partner alone thought that uh, we should get some kind of fiscal uh, agreement, or s if that exists, uh, to secure the rentals to say that to our owners, okay, until that level of earnings, uh, revenues, you will pay either zero or rather small amount. So it took time to convince me, but then uh, I, I thought to myself, it's probably a good idea because not only it will secure the thing, but it also will give us uh, uh, as a trusted partner when we go in other countries or we speak with uh, well, you mentioned Ford, uh, 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 for Ford, for instance, the deal with Ford, which we may uh, 
touch upon later on, uh, the fact that we had a fiscal agreement was very, very important. So we started this process. It's a very lengthy process. Even though such a thing exists in Belgium, it doesn't exist in every country. So we went to see a, a fiscalist, then we went to see a lawyer, and then we all together went to see the fiscal authorities, which has this uh, cell called uh, Advanced uh, Ruling Division, whereby you can file a, a, a motion for a ruling and which is granted or not granted. Yeah. And, 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 and then uh, uh, what, was your, what was your proposal? So the proposal was to uh, limit, uh, not only limit, but give a very precise figure of how much people will need to pay in terms of taxes uh, up to a certain level of revenue. So the level was rather easy. It's 200 euros per month, so 2,400 euros a year. Uh, with up to 60 days cumulative rentals per year for one car. And if that's uh, the case, then the, the person is going to pay uh, 25% uh, income tax with a deductibility of around 15%. So you can make your calculation, basically it's between 10 and 12% effectively that you need to pay in terms of taxes. Yeah. And it went as far as we have this uh, uh, frequently asked questions. We can even tell the people you need to put that amount in that sell in your uh, uh, income tax slip when you get it. Yeah, yeah. so, so, it's, so, so that's it's also a, a really big unique value uh, uh, of the platform. Yeah, and, and it's a nationwide because uh, we know that Airbnb did a deal with like the city of Amsterdam, the city of uh, Paris, uh, San Francisco, but to our knowledge no one tried or, or succeeded in getting that on a national level. So wherever you are in Belgium, if you're a member of Caramigo, this is applicable. And, and is it only for Caramigo members or when a, a, yeah. a competitor is here, he, uh, he or she has it's to do it It's only for Caramigo members because the ruling is uh, nominative. So it's really that company yeah. with the state. Yeah. And, and, and is, is this process also really unique uh, uh, in Belgium? So like when we want to have something like this in, in Germany or Netherlands or wherever? I, I don't know. I, I, I think I was recently interviewed by a French newspaper and um, apparently it doesn't exist in France. Uh, it's too bad because I think it, uh, if a company proactively tries to find such a deal, it's mm. better than wait, waiting to be sued by uh, the court or, or the fisc. But if it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. Yeah. It does exist yeah. in Belgium yeah. and I'm pretty sure it does exist in other countries. Yeah. Interesting. And, and uh, when we go back to the startup of, 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 of Caramigo, so, so in the end, after a year, one half year preparations, uh, the platform was ready, the, the, the insurance was was ready. So then you started. So yeah. so how did you start? Because in the end, yeah, that's I think uh, the the biggest challenge in building a platform that you really have to yeah, build up the liquidity on the demand and supply side. Sure. So that's why the partnership we have with those two players, insurance and road science system, are not just supplier customer relationship. It's much uh, deeper than that. Uh, we have a partnership by which, for instance, touring on a regular basis does entice its own users to uh, rent out their car on Caramigo. You may wonder why do they do that? It's very simple because if a person, a member of Touring, who got an advertising by Touring saying, put your car in Caramigo, you're going to get money back, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if this person does it, then this car will be available. If this car is available, at some point it will be rented. And if it's rented, then we all get a kickback on the rental price, including Touring. So that's why so this is the key element for us uh, when we go to other countries. We all, this is really the, the model we want. We just don't want a, a, an insurance saying, okay, well, we'll insure you, but that's it. Uh, we need someone who just trusts the system enough to be willing to be more proactive than just uh, providing a, a, an insurance or roadside assistance service. Yeah. So that's how we start. Uh, always, uh, we do a lot of PR. And when this is, we reach a certain number of cars, then we think it's uh, time to uh, to start the rentals, and that's what we did in uh, in June last year. Okay, and 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 what was your biggest challenge? Did the demand or the supply side? I think the challenge for now is the supply side. So far, the demand will uh, it's also not a bit tricky to get, but what is certain as is you can you don't have supply, you don't have any demand. Yeah, I mean you do have the demand, it's just you can't fulfill it. Yeah, and, 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 and what's your, 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 your growth strategy? Do, do, do you grow by, by city? Uh, because I no. think car sharing peer-to-peer -peer is, is, is most of them, it, 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 yeah. it is local. We're very much, we're rather big in Brussels and in uh, two or three other cities. 
and we would need to grow uh, quicker in other cities. So that's why we need to start advertising at some point uh, and to uh, uh, not only paid advertising, but also uh, get people do their own advertising, which is a bit what you have behind you, this uh, electrostatic sticker, mm. which is given to every single uh, uh, owner, uh, which he can put in and take out. It's not a permanent sticker, which says rent me, uh, mm. And hopefully the people around uh, the car in his neighborhood will be, uh, some of them might be interested in renting this car. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, going back to, uh, to, uh, to your uh, tax ruling, because you say, okay, uh, a maximum amount of, of, of 200 euro a month, yep. 60 days uh, a year. Uh, what happens when people are renting out their car more or earning more? Do you also warn them, okay? It, well, they will be warned indeed, but not warned like uh, you can't do it anymore. It's just warned that you're going outside the limits of the ruling, which probably means they will need to get a VAT number and declare this as professional uh, income, uh, which to me is actually a bit fair because, as you know, some of the people uh, on some uh, rental platforms do it for as you know as a business and you can't pretend that if you have 20 apartments uh, all of them being rented to tourists in uh, Paris that you just uh, do this uh, on, on a you know on a small scale it becomes a business and so if it becomes a business it's pretty fair that you pay and you register as a business yeah and that's what we'll do yeah and how, how do you look to the discussions so there are quite, quite some discussion in the lens uh, around Airbnb because in the end, the platform has all the data, and the uh, the government says, "Okay, we want to have the data." Because no it's... problem, we actually proactively said to the government, "We'll give you the data if you want." Okay, uh, they didn't want it, uh, so we don't yes. give it. Uh, we were even ready to to collect the taxes, and uh, the value chain is made in Carmi in such a way that you can have twenty uh, stakeholders coming in the value chain. Each of them can get their share of the pie, and in that case. It could have been the government or the fiscal authorities. It would have been easy to yeah. say, okay, whatever amount we decide, you get 5%. They could get easily 5%. But where it was complex for them is that uh, it would have been per local fiscal authority. So we would have had to send the money here, there. And that is complex for us. If we could could send the money to, like, to the, you know, the Ministry of Finance, it wouldn't be any problem. Yeah. Uh, and then it would be great because everybody would, uh, you know, it would be f fair. Uh, I, I'm not really not a contender of, of the taxes. I mean, you need to pay taxes. Uh, and uh, about the privacy, we really respect the privacy, but I don't think, I mean, if the fiscal authorities came to us and say, give us the, the, uh, the, the people who rented out their car, I have no problem in giving it to them. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think, I'm a bit tired, to be honest, with the, the fiscal, the, the fiscal, the uh, privacy, blah, blah, around that some companies are so, they're more focused on privacy than on more important subjects. So yeah, 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 it's also, uh, it's, uh, it's always an interesting balance in, 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 in how much you share and how much you don't want to share. Yeah, because of course uh, we don't share that with competitors. No. But the FISC, who else, you know, I mean, they're entitled to get it. Yeah. Or, yeah. or actually, I can also tell you something, uh, as you uh, unfortunately know, uh, the cars that were used for the Paris bombings were rented in Belgium. And uh, we even at some point said, were they rented with us? So we proactively uh, uh, had uh, contacts with the anti-terrorist squad so that any rentals made will be given to them uh, uh, just to avoid such a thing uh, coming, uh, taking place with Yeah. Yeah, okay. Interesting. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because uh, you're the first person on a platform that says, okay, no problem. We, uh, we, but uh, I think it's also very interesting because then you can also, because that's also one of the key challenges for, uh, I think for the future of, of every platform is how you, how do you say relevant for your customers? Uh, because uh, when you look at, at a platform and when you look at a peer to peer car sharing platform, the added value is uh, I see four things. I think uh, that there are many more, but four key things. The first one is of course the platform the software. Second one is the insurance. Third one is the <coughs> reputation system and 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 and, uh, uh, and the idea check, and the last one is the critical mass uh, that that you can uh, do business. Uh, and what you see now is, I uh, I think there's a, there's there's a big challenge for platforms uh, with local business like peer-to-peer -peer car sharing because in the end, uh, 
it, uh, I uh, think it would be really cool when you would be the biggest one in Europe, but in the end, I'm not going to cycle for more than five minutes for my peer-to-peer uh, -peer shared car. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the, uh, the software will be free in the future or mm -hmm. open source, like we also now uh, have uh, a shared track on Finance. Okay, it, it's a different quality, but in the end, it's, it, it, the quality will grow. I guess the insurance will in the end go to the uh, person themselves, not to the platforms. Uh, because there, like in the Netherlands, there are also quite some some issues or some some potential issues uh, with uh, with fraud. Uh, the uh, uh, the rating and the idea check. Uh, there are also quite some uh, new uh, startups uh, everywhere in the world busy with that uh, to make external profiles. Yeah. And the critical mass, uh, because it's a local activity, it's it's less hard uh, to uh, to to reach a critical mass. So, uh, and what way do you think uh, when you hear my story? Uh, what challenge do you see for yourself and your business model in the future? And what do you see in my story where you say, Martijn, <laughs> yeah, that's not true or we, or we see this difference? So, so in what way will you keep... The, the challenge will, is simply you need to uh, entice a, a, a sufficient number of users to that they don't need a car every day. That the possession of cars uh, to some people, because I really want to pinpoint this, uh, so sometimes you, you, most of the people, or 99% of the people we talk to, are enthusiastic about the system. However, when you tell them, would you rent out your car, then only maybe 10%, 15% say, sure. What is irritating is the people who don't want to share their car, thinking that everybody is like them. But it's not the case. There are people who don't give a shit about the car. I don't. Uh, my car is just, I mean, if my car is broken, there are, it's quite easy to find another one. A house is different. A house has you know things which are pretty much your your own stuff inside a car. It's just a car. So um, the challenge is to you know uh, I think uh, imagine we get um, forty thousand cars in Caramigo in five years, which would be gigantic. But that would be only not even not even one percent of the total fleet of cars in Belgium. So to me, the uptake can be enormous. Then between now. And, and what can be in the future. Uh, and, and the key challenge is to get the more users and more, um, but I, it, it will be difficult and in a way it will be easier than it would have been 20 years ago because the younger generation, mm -hmm. some of them, some of them, not all of them, are no longer in the possession obsession. Uh, they just want to use a car. I, I, I mean, I'm 47, so when I was uh, younger, we bought records. Then we bought CDs, then we bought MP3, so stuff we would own. We would be proud of, you know, having and showing. Now, I don't really don't care. I've got Spotify uh, or, or YouTube even. Uh, I just want to enjoy listening to music. Whether it's my possession or not, I really don't care. And for cars, some people, 20%, 30%, 15%, no longer need a car to be their own property. Uh, they just want to go from A to B as easy as possible. I think yeah. today you came with a subway to our office. Uh, maybe if you need to go to Louvain from here, it would have been easier with a car. But it's not that I, I, I do come quite often with a bike. Uh, and sometimes I take the subway. It's you don't need the car every day. Yeah. And to be honest, Brussels is a good place in the end because uh, the congestion in Brussels is getting crazier and crazier. Uh, you maybe don't follow the Belgian news, but recently. Uh, the, some of the tunnels in Brussels are in such a bad condition that they are they're obliged to close them down. And people are, yeah, yeah, it's a scandal and so on, but why do these people take their car in the end? Why don't they just bike uh, or, you know, five minutes, you know, five minutes, maybe 10% of the people in Brussels could go to their work by biking. Yeah. But no, they take their car and then they complain. Yeah, so, uh, I do really agree that's, that that's the way where uh, approaching mobility will change completely in the future and, and also with new generations who are more uh, focused on, on experience and solutions than on possession. Uh, but then still, <clears throat> uh, when uh, it will be easier to create your own local platform, uh, uh, what do you think will be uh, the added value of being a national or a uh, global platform? Uh, when the uh, I don't really trust the local thing because uh, if it's local, then then Okay, you may attract just a few people, but the thing is, uh, with a system like our Amigo, you can have people coming in from, I don't know, Greece, uh, visiting friends in Brussels, and they can rent your car. So there, if you have just a local closed platform, uh, then it's just not possible. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so the two options are, are local or 
international where you can also uh, get to other countries yeah uh, and then get there in this yeah we, our, our our wish is to open carmigo in other countries and imagine uh, i mean this is all theoretical we open in uh, to make things easier in finland which is not the case but imagine we open carmigo in finland and uh, a belgian uh, a belgian registered carmigo member and uh, understands that he can also rent a car amigo car in finland where he has nothing specific to do it will be his own language he can register he will have been already checked by us for the belgian part so he could easily rent a car in finland yeah. through yeah. car amigo finland yeah. so uh, in, in just like an airbnb person can rent an airbnb yeah. uh, house pretty much everywhere yeah and uh, and then there are two scenarios uh, first one is that you build up your, uh, so that you expand your platform in every country. Yeah. The second one is that you can start working together with yeah. our national uh, uh, Yeah, we tr we're trying yeah. that now with a few players. Uh, basically, the idea is, uh, I mean, maybe I should go uh, backwards a bit. Our original business is the director wing inquiry. So you call us, uh, I want the number of Mr. Uh, Jan Janssen in Brussels. Uh, I get it through the service, which is called 1212. Uh, however, what we have also is international. So, when someone calls 1212, they can get the number of Mr. Jean Dupont in Paris. Obviously, we don't you know, build up the entire telephone database of France or of Germany or of Spain. What we do, we are linked with the database of a company like ours in these countries, and we you know, ping their database, we get the result back, it's fetched in our system, and our uh, call center agent can answer. So going back to peer-to-peer, we have cars, Snapcar has cars, uh, Drivey has cars in France. We could very well have a system by which a Carmigo member in Brussels speaking only, for instance, Flemish, uh, would need a car in France. He would stay on the Carmigo front end platform without any extra registration. And he could well order a car, which eventually will be provided by uh, Drivey. Uh, but without leaving the, the, the Carmigo Flemish platform, and of course, vice versa. Uh, so in that case, uh, yeah, you don't really, uh, I mean, for instance, for us, France is a country where you have already three to four players. Why would we spend so much money to get a fleet of cars, whereas there are already cars there, uh, and, we can, uh, and, and there's a nice business model, our user pays us, and we pay Drivey and Drivey plays the owner. So yeah. in the end, again, you can incorporate such a, a partner within the, va the value chain. Yeah, no, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting about Caramigo is that you're really from the start are, are uh, designed to work with different stakeholders, the uh, uh, corporate stakeholders, yeah. with the government stakeholders, but also with uh, your uh, competitors. And I think that's... Uh, yeah, well, I wouldn't call them competitors because oh, yeah, okay. they're <coughs> not in the same market. Yeah. And that's actually the beauty of it. Yeah. Because yeah. if they were, maybe it would be different but if they're not you know I, I am sure i have people especially in the summer car amigo members willing to rent a car in south of france certain yeah. it's just i can't provide it to them now yeah. and 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 uh, and drivey would be probably pleased by uh, if they're a renter a drivey rent uh, renter sorry a drivey owner in uh, in marseille has 10 rental that month but because of car amigo it could get 12, 13, obviously would be happy. Yeah. Drive you would be happy and my user would be happy. Yeah, and, and uh, do you know uh, already some examples in the sharing economy who are working like this? Or no. would it be a first no, we, unique... We, uh, I think it would be the, the first, uh, it would initiate the first one. Yeah. Probably uh, some other companies might think about it, but... Um, we, so we're having these discussions yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where it will lead, but uh, we're open uh, to this. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. And 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 uh, what are your plans now for the future? Uh, let's say in two years, because you say okay, uh, our growth is now slowly till st till steady. Uh, so I guess that, that you want to grow uh, faster. So uh, Belgium was is where we are. Uh, it's not where I'm from, but it's just where we are physically. So we had to start here. However, there are markets which are more interesting than Belgium uh, for several reasons, uh, uh, and we our focus is to. Uh, expand Caramigo in some extra countries uh, and and uh, yeah and make it grow uh, hopefully faster in these countries uh, and not necessarily going to the big countries so uh, I can't really give too much details but uh, why uh, nobody's watching <laughs> an American an American company is going to do what they're going to be focusing on France UK Germany Spain <laughs> Italy okay yeah. maybe Poland. Um, 
And there are, if you count the number of countries in the European Union or outside, I mean, we're not stuck with the European Union, uh, like Blablacar. Blablacar uh, bought a company in uh, Ukraine, uh, Russia. Uh, you know, in the end, they're doing a good business there in yeah. Mexico. Um, so, yeah, the, I wouldn't say the sky is the limit because we need to assess market per market uh, if there's a potential within the urban users area or within the touristic areas. Yeah. But some areas are really uh, potentially interesting. Yeah. Thank you. So interesting. So I'm really going to follow your company uh, the, the next months on the internet. Yeah. So thanks for the interview. Welcome. And uh, good luck with, uh, with growing your business. Okay. Thanks a lot.